start recording. All right, folks, this is Benedictus here, our brother, and I'm going to talk about Nixos and how we can be used to escape the Unix hellhole we are in. So, I just ah, I accidentally enabled my video. Let's be enable again. So, uh, I always like to start with this direct type star code. Like I mean, if 10 years from now, when you are doing something quick and dirty, you suddenly visualize that I'm looking over your shoulders and say to yourself, Magistra would not have liked this. Well, that would be enough mortality for me. And that's like, the whole infrastructure ecosystem is a freaking mess. And we are doing nothing about it, we are just pushing the dirty to the, to down to the carpet. And I'm going to, to show how Nix can be used to do that. The first issue we have in infrastructure actually is the, the packaging issue. Like we are not representing dependencies the right way. And what is the right way? So of course the command is cutting, but here's the idea behind it. I run this command on Python because I wanted to see like what is required for me to run Python. And what I got, uh, what I got was like this transitive closure. So for me to run the little Python interpreter, I have a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different uh, libraries or other binaries that I need to have installed on my system to to make sure the Python interpreter works. Like I need to have SQLite installed. I need to have iglibc installed. So I, I, we can think of the Python interpreter and its dependencies as a graph, and somehow we've been failing to represent dependencies as such. So the whole point of this talk is that Nix represents things as graphs, and the fact that Nix makes it explicit, it it shows that is a is a better approach when it comes to the whole Unix mess. It's, it's a better approach to survive the Unix mess. Okay, we can't outsmart Unix like we we are going to be stuck with it forever or until the year two two thousand thirty eight. But well, it's 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 it's, it's being like the it's best. thirty thirty four, right? The Unix apocalypse. Uh, I don't know. Man. I hope it, it hope it comes sooner because it's <laughs> a mess. But uh, when it comes to using Nixos, man, it's been one of the best tech bets that I that I've done in my entire life. Like when it comes to technology, we usually don't we, we usually make bets on what's going to last and what's going to not last. And Nix learning Nix has been one of the best bets because. The more I learn about it, the more productive I am, and to this day I can't, like I got spoiled by it. I can't use a normal system anymore because Nix automates so much of my life at this point. Uh, for instance, I also like to, if you never did it, this is usually how you build a package from source. So you download the source code, of course you have to unpack the source code. You change the directory, you just pack it. If the packages require some configuration options, you configure the package, right? And then if the package has a make file, you have to run make and then make install. Most packages you install, like uh, on your Unix systems, they, they, it's not that they work that way, but they always have that, that structure. Like they get source code, they extract it, they configure options, and then they run some installation script on it. And the whole idea is that Nix automates all this crap. Uh, the naming ecosystem is not the best. Like uh, we have Nix, the language, the lazy untyped functional programming language. We have Nixos, which is a Linux distribution managed by Nix. And we have Nix packages, which is the place where Nix users place their meta packages. And the core idea is that we try to get stuff done in a reproducible way. Uh, but if, if you are someone who's been developing for a while, like, oh, we already have Docker. Like, I, I, hear the, I hear that a lot whenever I talk about Nix. And here's the thing, and this is what I want to pin down, is that Docker solves a deployment problem, it solves a sandboxing problem, and it does, it, after, I've been using Docker since 2015, I know it, I think, and it doesn't solve it in a reproducible way. It solves it, it, solves it in a repeatable way. There is a difference. Like, Docker is going to guarantee, whenever you write a Docker file, that your instructions are going to be run in the same order that you want. But if you are, for instance, on Debian, running the same instruction on Debian over and over again doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the same result. In fact, ah, okay, I didn't put it here because I thought it was 
So, for instance, this week I had this issue on work. Like, uh, I was running some pipelines, and someone complained about uh, a pipeline breaking. And it was a, a pipeline running on Debian, and the only solution was to retry the entire pipeline. Why? No one, want, no one knows why, but for some reason, there is a Docker image down there that's running some irreproducible step that just crashes randomly. And the solution people usually take is like, oh, we're just going to rerun this pipeline. We don't care. Uh, but the more you think about it, you're like, uh, le let's try to go a little bit deeper. Like, wh why is this so fundamentally wrong? Uh, well, the unit's hellhole, I always call it that. It's that, especially on Linux, okay, the package manager management on Linux system is a freaking mess. And you just need to look at where binaries go, like on, for example, on Linux at least. I never use the BSD, so I can't comment on that, but. On Linux, you have like slash bin, and sometimes you have your stuff going to USR bin, or sometimes it goes to a user USR local bin, and then, uh, and then you have you have no idea where your stuff is going to. And that, of course, you also have etc, which is where all the configuration goes to. Sometimes, because some configuration is written somewhere, some configuration goes to your home folder, and the first. Uh, the first abstraction that Nix gives you about is the Nix store. Like, how do we solve this whole uh, file system hierarchy bullshit problem? Well, the Nix store is basically a graph. So whenever you install Nixos, you get a partition built in your system. That partition is called Nix slash Nix slash store. And everything inside that partition slash Nix slash store star they are nodes of a graph. So, uh, oh man, I run another co command again, but it broke. But here's an example of something that goes to the Nix store. I ask it, this is what this command is doing. Give me the directory where you find the binary for NeoVim. And the first thing we notice is that NeoVim is installed in slash Nix, slash store, some random hash, and then there is the NeoVim binary, like NeoVim's the version and then bin. Oh man, I, we can't see that it got broken, but anyway. This is usually the structure you get of the nodes in the Nix store. So not only do you have those hashed uh, nodes, those nodes can point to other can point to other nodes inside the Nix store. I took this from the original paper about Nixos. So we can see here like Snash Nix, Snash Store. Uh, we have this is a very old paper, so it's like talking about subversion, etc. So we can see that uh, subversion depends on OpenSSL and glibc. So this hashed version of subversion is pointing to a hashed version of, of OpenSSL, and it's also pointing to a hashed version of glibc, which themselves they have like a library file inside them, and it's just like symlinks. So you have something that is hashed pointing to other stuff that is hashed, but everything is inside the Nix store. There is nothing outside it, okay? So we already solved the centralization problem. Everything is centralized in one place. This is another example of, because this enables the idea of generations in the entire system. So if my system is contained inside this partition called Nix store, that means that the whole configuration of my system is also an output of a hash. So we can imagine that our system configuration is a function that takes inputs and produces an output, which is the whole system state. And if the whole system state is also inside the Nix store, that means I can version it. So in Nix, you can have generations of your system that build up over time, and then you can easily revert. Why? Because reverting a system configuration is just going and pointing to an old link. And since this is all pure, I can guarantee that, okay, I reverted here, I'm pointing to the old links inside that graph that I built. Well, the properties is that this is the, the properties that we get for free is that we get something that is reproducible. And since we are using a real programming language to configure the system, it's also composable. Well, it mixes a DSL, it has all those cool properties, we can talk about that later. So here's an example of a Nix program that builds 
a very simple GNU program called GNU Hello. So we can see that, uh, uh, I don't know, can you see my mouse hovering over it? Yes. Okay, so yes, we can, can see this is where we put our function arguments. So this function of ours takes a single argument called packages, which we are going to, by default, take something called nix packages as a as argument. So this is the argument and this is the default argument if I don't send anything to this function. Anything after that is the function body. So here in the function body, for people who are familiar with functional programming languages, I have a let declaration in this little uh, structure here. So I'm saying that I want version, this is just a, a string, I want version 2.12 and I want this URL. And here is the actual, where the actual action happens. So I'm using the whole, I'm using my argument here, packages, packages, standard environment, make derivation. I'm, I'm telling that this package GNU Hello has a name and a version, and you should download it from this source here, which is URL. This is just like a string uh, uh, interpolation. So it's this URL, this, this is the, the right address, and this is the SHA. So this is the hash that this uh, source code here should, should, should have. If this source code like changes and there is a hash mismatch, this build is going to fail. So I have guarantees that I'm downloading the right source code to build. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. I, now I'm afraid of changing it, but let's see. I'm going to build this later. I'm going to do a live presentation here. So to build this command, we just go to the, of course, we save this file and we say it's like hello.nix. And if you run nix build hello.nix, we get this output here. So we actually get a, dot result folder in our in the current working directory which which has a bin folder and has a hello binary so our little command here like our little nix derivation uh, is going to produce a binary which contains the gnu hello binary here which is hosted in ftp.gnu.org gnu hello but i'm too afraid to do that but... I, I maybe I should, oh man, I'm kind of afraid, but I think this is going to work. Let's see. At this play, we have Wayland, probably. Can you, so can, you, did, 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 can you see my terminal here? Yeah, I can see Kitty. Okay, that's good. So I'm here in the comma talk, let's, oh, is it, is the terminal readable? Probably it is, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the examples folder. Now we have some action, hope not the flakes. So here is the the package we just built, right? We can just run here, next build, hello.nix. Oh, look, it was fast. Of course it was fast because I already have it stored. So this binary that we just, because I built before, nix cached, and it's it is here in the nix store. That's why it just works, okay? There is only one issue with this whole derivation we have here. Uh, I was lying to you about this package being fully reproducible. And here is the reason. The reason is it's in the argument, okay? What, what is this import Nix package supposed to be? So Nix used to have this thing called channels and the channels were the only part of Nix that were not fully reproducible because these important Nix packages is going to take the Nix packages that I have on my own system, which is subject to change before, because maybe tomorrow I update Nix and tomorrow Nix packages has a different sets of functions, different sets of packages, different sets of defaults. And then I'm going to run the same Nix build command tomorrow and I'm going to break it. So this part, like uh, the, this little section here of my code is not fully reproducible because depending on the time that I run it, let's say I wanted to run this four years from now, it's not going to work. But locally, the Nixus community, they've worked on that, they've wor they have addressed this issue into a, an abstraction called flakes. Luckily, we have the terminal here, so I can explain the difference between the flakes and the... So, here is the same GNU hello program 
in the flake format, right? We already see a difference here. So we have, instead of having just a little function and a body, now I have to, I have this input, this input notation, where I put my Nix Packers URL. Now, this by itself doesn't make it reproducible because, well, well I was just calling Nix Packages on my argument later. But here is the deal. Can you see that we have a log file here on my folder? This log file was generated and it's literally locking the version of Nix Packages that I am using. So what that means? That means that this little this instruction that I have here, this flake.nix, is bound to use the version of Nix packages and other inputs that I may edit. I'm going to show an example of other of how to use like multiple inputs later. So, but this version of Nix packages, as you can see here, last modified by a Unix timestamp, it has a certain hash and it has a certain rev on GitHub. So I'm binding this little flake.nix file that I have here to a specific version of a Nix packages in a specific time. Which means that if I wanted to run this tomorrow, or if I wanted to run this four years from now, I'm going to get the same binary. Let's test it. Well, assuming they didn't delete the repo, right? Assuming they did, that's why, that's why you have your own version of Nix, is Nix packages you, you scrub. Yeah, I and also you... see another... Oh, I have a question, like, yeah. I, I, I really want to make it, but maybe, I don't know, how do you prefer, Benny? Should we ask now, or should no, we no. hold a to the ask as, soon, ask as soon as possible. Okay, so my question is, as far as I can tell, although I understood what you said about the flake, what the, what, the, what is the problem that the flake is supposedly is fixing? Can't you just put the URL of GitHub into the import, into the, that the older version in the Nix file? When you do like you import Nix like, pack, pa yeah. packages, and then you could put the hash there. No, no, yeah, there there were lots of tricks that people use it in the past to to make version pinning yes. easier. Like there were a bunch of there were a bunch of tricks you you could use to make like to really pin the version of Nix packages, but they were not as ergonomic as we have now. I'm going to show you how ergonomic it is. Okay. First, the, the first thing you notice is that the the CLI changes, right? Because before I was using Nix, uh, Nix uh, dash no. dash build, Nix. and then we have Nix build. dash shell and Nix space develop, and we have all these exactly. siblings so, that one at some point one of them will be killed. But yeah, so Nix dash is going to be the old API to do stuff. Nowadays, like especially if you go to old tutorials, they're probably using that. Nix build is the new CLI that uses flakes. So we got the same package at the end of the day. If we go to bin result hello, it's still our loved hello package, like our, our hello program. But here's the deal. What if I want to update the, my inputs? In the old way, it was a, a kind of messy process. Uh, it wasn't as ergonomic. If I want, as ergonomic, if I want to update uh, my log file, I'll just do that. It's going to download a new version of Nix packages. Let's wait. I hope it doesn't drop my call. But it seems to be like a, it seems to be chill today. Can you, can you guys hear me? Then Emacs starts compiling. Oh no! Don't tell. You you see, like it seems that the hash changed because the log file was using a version of Nix packages from January two. Now it got updated to January four to, to today. So let's do a Nix build again. Probably run. Well, it worked again. So it's just, even though I use the new version of Nix package, my whole build script, none of the hashes, none of the dependencies of my hash, none of the none of the dependencies of my uh, hello world program, change it in the new version of Nix package. So it just uses the same hash. This is another. Oh man, this is another awesome feature of Nix. Like. If the hashes of your dependencies and their dependencies are still the same, Nix is not going to recompile stuff in a crazy way. So as long as the hashes of your dependencies don't change, Nix is, do is not going to do anything. It's like, it's very lazy. It just builds where it's supposed to build. We're going to have a better example here. Just give me a second. So we have a flake. 
Oh yeah, this is a... I, I couldn't put the Spatula build here. I'm going to show the Spatula build as an example as well, because it's a, an interesting project on how it used to be and how... Here. I don't Also know... introduce a Spatula. What is a Spatula? Oh, a Spatula is the... Yeah, we, do I get something? Do I get at least a shirt, man? I don't know, man. We can make shirts. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna lie about it, I confess. I looked on, on, on like, how expensive it is to make shirts with, like, a, a, a custom logo and stuff. I did look into that. Oh, man. That, that <laughs> oh, man. I'm, not, I'm not going to work for free for you if I don't get a free shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need to learn from Google, okay? Okay, if Google, your price is a t-shirt, I can, I, I get you, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here we have the, the flake for the Spatula projects, and the thing we, we already have different, we are still consuming from Nix Packers Unstable, right? Of course, it's some different version of Nix Packers Unstable, probably, because it's on the flake.log. But here, we have a different argument. We have this flake with heels. Oh, that's why I should I should have told that about that. Sorry about that, guys. There was another annoying issue that flakes are supposed to solve. Do you see this here? Packages x86 x64 Linux. Hello. Mm -hmm. I, I I forgot to explain how the whole structure of the new hello package works. So we have inputs, and we have whatever we're going to spit into the Nix store. So it's the outputs. As you can see here, we have this thing called what? Wait, what is this? x86 x64 like uh, oh that's the architecture I'm targeting. we have darwin as well and stuff yeah we have darwin we have like the arc 64 which i always forget the name uh, arc have... 64 for is arm it, is it... yeah arm exactly thank you so as you can see this package i'm building in this flake it's only supposed to work on 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 linux builds on Linux architectures, oh sorry, yeah, on Linux architectures, on Linux systems, okay? Uh, and uh, you can do now cross-compilation easily. It's just that this very basic example that I did, like it's very basic, very boring, is not, is not going to run on Mac OS. I'm not going to produce a Mac binary. Okay. But let's go to the, to the Spatula, because as you can see, Spatula is different, right? Spatula is taking the usual Nix package unstable uh, as input, but it's taking this as well. So this is someone else's module. So what is, what is this Flake U2 module? So someone can write a how can I say it? Someone can someone can dedicate their time to write some very ergonomic Nix-like stuff that you can use in your Flakes, and you can just consume it as an input. So someone go, someone went there and wrote a Flake Utils module, and of course I'm making it follow the same Nix patches that I'm that I'm making. So I, I could be using the stable version, but I'm making sure this Flake Utils is using the stable unstable version as well. And look look what's interesting here. I can take this as input as well. So I'm I'm not only am I taking Nix packages, but I also taking this Flake with Flake Utils module as, as as an input. And what is the cool part about that? So the, the, the person who implemented this flake flake, uh, flake utils module, they made a very handy function called eat each default system. So I could easily write a flake that builds into multiple different architectures. That's why nowadays I think that this was an issue with the old Spatula config like uh, uh, the the Nix shell yeah. didn't work on macOS, right? Yeah, Magit. That's the that was the problem. I still, I still cannot develop there, by the way. But I can compile the code. That's enough. Yeah, you can compile, but you can. Yeah, this only guarantees that it's going to compile. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to work. It's. It, I can actually do that. It's just that on Nix Darwin, I need to open on sudo, right? Because of macOS. But that's the only problem. Nix Darwin is such a horrible experience. Actually, Apple is such a horrible. Experience. I can't use a MacBook. Like I, I literally can't. So we can see we, we are using this very handy function called each default system. So it's going to compile to a bunch of different systems. Uh, so we have our packages here. Let's go to the dev shell first, right? Because in, in the old Nix, the old Nix way, we developed something called shell.nix. Now you can embed 
a development environment into the Nix shell itself. So we can go here and say, oh man, uh, just give me something that looks like a Nix shell. So just give me a Nix shell, but give me all those extra inputs in it. So I want Kabal install, I want stack, I also want all those those other dev tools, so we can work with it. If I uh, if we need, I don't know, like a GNU uh, make here. The, those is those where is those P though? P I don't think I have good configuration here. No, I, ooh, I just broke everything. But anyway, oh yeah, because this is Haskell package sub shell form. So yeah, this is some extra happy Haskell packages that I might need. But anyway, so here as well I can specify a package name. So this is also another awesome feature because I know Lemus is a Haskell coder and the, the Haskell experience on Nixos is literally the best one. And why is that? Most of the Haskell tooling will just work fine on Nixos. So someone went to the trouble of building a tool which is already in Nix packages, by the way, you don't need to do anything, called Call Cabal to Nix. You just need to pass your package name, which by the way is Spatula, so it's going to go to your current working directory. And you can do any overrides here, this is not important, but someone already built a little handy function inside Nix packages itself that just calls Cabal from inside Nix and compiles everything. And you can just like, this is going to be the Spatula project. So we're telling Nix to build the Spatula project and to build the Spatula project, we just call Cabal to Nix. So there's already a way for us to call Cabal inside Nix and things are they are either going to break or they are going to, to, to run fine. And the issue we are also having is that how Cabal Tunix was breaking because the tests were broken. So you, there's also this very handy library inside the Haskell modules in, in, on Nix package, which is called don't check. So we don't check the test files. Like this function automatically ignores the, the testing suite altogether. And of course, we are setting the default package to be the, the Spatula binary. And the dev shell is also going to include the, the Spatula binary. So we need to build, we need to correctly build the projects for us to develop inside it. And we can test it right now. So let's go to Spatula and do the Nix build. Oh, I probably did a Nix, a Nix update. So it's going to download, download 8 gigabytes right now. Yeah, Live. so okay. another thing that I don't know if, you, if you're if you aware, Benevides, but there is a thing that I'm not 100% sure if I understand what it means, but there is something called Haskell.nix. Which... Yeah, Haskell.nix is a, I think it's a flake project. It's someone someone built a very handy template to yes. build and run Haskell. Project. I think it's a project from uh, input, output, IO, yes. right? IO yes, yeah. yes. They were, they were, they are one of the heaviest Nix users on the market. Mm -hmm. So we are building our flakes. Let's just wait. Okay, while we wait, I have a question. Yes. yes. Okay, so what if, uh, what is, what about the, I want you to talk about a little bit of the process of getting something that is outside of Nix packages. How hard it is to pick something that is outside and put it inside. Do you know that? So it depends on how fucked up the whole ecosystem is. Depends uh, if it's Python. <laughs> it's by, oh, like, it's Python I, I, was, old, man. I, I was looking at some uh, definitions for Java projects, and man, it makes the Python projects like look like the best thing ever made. Because here's what happens. In Nix, you extract source code, you do some configurations, you build, and you're not supposed to have, for instance, internet connection when you build. You're supposed to be in a very uh, hermetic environment. You're supposed to be in a real sandbox. You don't have network connections. You don't have, you, you can't go on writing on crazy file system. No, you, you can't have that. You, you, you need to just build your project, right? That this is not the case sometimes of Java projects, like they... I see. So they, if they you Java had like internet connection, you would violate purity, right? Yeah, it would. Mm. Because you are, you are literally trusting that, you are literally trusting HTTP. Do you really trust mm. HTTP 100% of the time? No. 
Yeah. You can't trust the network. This is one, like one of the, the first things you should learn. Like, oh, the network is not trust. You can't trust the network. The network is not trustworthy. And what you do in Docker files, you do apt get install. Or, you know, you do, you do direct calls to network inside the Docker file. That's why sometimes shit breaks. Because it, 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 you are trusting the network. Like, you are putting too much trust on the network. No, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to extract the source code. You're supposed to run whatever configuration you need. And you're supposed to build. And you're supposed to, to generate a hash. And you can make that hash available. That's why, by the way, stuff is so fast on these patches because I'm using a binary cache. So, what's the deal? Uh, the way Nix does things enables me to actually properly use a binary cache. Because here's the deal if the hash is the same, like let's say I put a package on my system and the hash match it, matches the hash of a package that someone made available publicly. I could just download that package. I don't need to rebuild Firefox, for instance. I can trust that the version of Firefox that I'm using matches the hash that is like on the official Nix packages cache, binary cache. So Nix packages can be used in two ways. So you can be full paranoid and build your own packages 100% of the time. That's like the Nix packages, I think, small, which has no, I think it has very little binary cache. Very little usage of binaries. And then there's the normal mix package, which is, uh, I think it's Hydra who runs, uh, how can I say, continuous build. Whenever someone does some changes on mix packages, there's a bunch of automation going on. It builds the packages and then it publicly puts into the binary cache. So I don't have to build stuff too much. Another advantage of Nix, by the way, like Nix is the perfect tool to use Cabal in it. I had an issue with Stack, like, it's been a while since I used Stack, the, the Haskell package manager. But one thing that I really hated is how hard it was to use Stack in a very shitty laptop. Because Stack would be building all sorts of crazy packages on my system. That was like very annoying. Cabal has this binary cache thing, which is good, but Cabal can give you Cabal health. If you have ever used Cabal before Nix, I think it has been a while, like very, especially when I was learning Haskell. I did have a Cabal help, like a Cabal used to install things in a global folder in your system, and that's not the best idea ever. But Cabal and Nix combine in a very tight and nice way. So Cabal can benefit from the binary caches of Nixos, and then you just get like, and Nix can make Cabal a not Cabal hell tool. And so you get fast Haskell builds, like this one. We updated some bullshit thing. Let's, let's try a Nix Flake update here as well. Let's update all our flakes. So we updated Nix package. Let's see if something crazy happened in any of those Haskell dependencies that we that we inherited. Oh, look, I'm downloading a new version of JHC. It's going to be two gigabytes. gigabytes. Oh, bullshit. Let's do it. I don't care. I just updated Nix, Nix packages for this. Let's see how fast it is to build this Haskell project. Yeah, I think this most... fetch, right? Not build. Oh yeah, it's probably going to just fetch dependencies, and that's how yeah, fast it is. me, it, I have a problem here because I need to build stuff, right? Because most of it is, yeah. I think, is not cached for ARM. Yeah, like, and people don't, yeah, like, for you are using the M1 MacBook, right? <laughs> no, it's a M1 Mac Mini, but yeah. It's yeah, M1. yeah, so M1, like, you're not going to get too many cache bits. That's well, like the disadvantage. to be fair... To be fair, you could buy a server and have your own cache. Huh? Yeah, you, uh? you, you have, you have your own cache. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> we could use Victor's server, right? To do yeah, it. why not? We, use, we call it the Moldy server. Because it has mold now, we can have mold problems on the server. You can, so you can make your own graphics, why not? I, you could, I think you can also enable a flag. Can you enable a flag? I remember seeing this to expand this compilation so we can see. Like uh, that. I don't remember. Yeah. Because it shows just one line, right? Yeah, it's showing it's just one line. But it's already halfway anyway. I seen like seven or four. No, no, I'll say this because when we were using it's very annoying that I cannot compile and see because it only compiles via this thing <laughs> and I cannot <laughs> see the, the things, right? If I see if I get an error or something. 
Yeah. Yeah, but you, but uh, okay, it's already two out of two. Warning, it's already generated some binaries. Please work. How how old is this version of the code, by the way? I don't know. It's probably kind of. Uh, Battle as new December. one. Oh, so yeah, it's from December. Yeah, no, it's gonna be zero one until we finish the first phase. After the then after yeah, okay, that we change okay. the name. Oh, man, open the repo, like... please. Yeah, the, let's see if the repo works live. That would be crazy. Live? Okay, okay. Let's, let's do it live because the people. Want no, 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 no. You can, you can. I think oh, you. No. you if you want to compile the master, let's go, man. Let's go. Who cares? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Master works. Or no, just Nick's build. Yeah, just, just, Nick's, build just Nick's build should be enough. Let's be safe. Let's see if we, if we can reuse caches. Let's not go fast and humiliate ourselves. No, it is definitely faster. It's only 126 megabytes instead of 2 gigs. No, yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm saying. Let's go fast and safe and not humiliate ourselves. No, 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 it is working. That's okay. That's okay. totally okay. Oh, no, oh, I was dumb. Wait, guys, I, 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 I dumb that. I need to fetch origin, right? I need to pull. Oh, yes. Okay. I just go upside up it. Okay, <laughs> now... This. this is the last. Let, let's see the log. That's the algebraic and alias draft? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yesterday, right? I saw the Nekoma talk. The, the Nekoma... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, did you add a bunch of stuff? Uh, I didn't add any new dependencies. We didn't add any of those. So, mm. well, maybe the caching is not. And it's downloading oh, yeah. a different version of GHC, by the way, which is interesting. Yeah. No, no, like it's downloading the version of GHC that this log file has. Because I did the Nix. Remember that I did the Nix update? Oh, okay. It wasn't that on the other branch? Oh, you rebased, right? Yeah, he rebased. He rebased the thing. Well, we are okay. So now we're gonna take a look if the the Nix the Nix flakes, if they are okay with the newest the latest version of the of yeah. the thing, which has type yeah, alias. Gonna... That's that's the main thing that we did last last time. Did you did you merge this by the way? Let me check something. No, we didn't. I didn't merge yet because I'm uh, it's still a working progress PR. Let's check it then. Yeah, but that's very cool. That's a very good use case of flakes, in my opinion. Yeah. Especially because yeah, so. Haskell has a lot of like versioning matters. For instance, if you are doing a project in yeah. GHC 8 and you it is a gigantic project and then you want to update GHC 9, like that can be a hellish experience. Because exactly like some that. functions they they change the type signature some breaks like some changes in the compiler completely screws your code like there is a change from jc8 to 9 that actually added one corner case in, in which the order of the code matters and because that that was never an issue in haskell nobody cared but then jc9 said you know for these specific things of i, th I guess type families and stuff you need to care and then everybody's code just like Nuked. Everybody just broke. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it, you need to be careful of that. But that's what I think that how the flakes can help us because you can just like, oh, I'm gonna just pin the JC8 and I'm fine. Yeah, and you, you can also, like, since this is a, a, a natural programming language, you can write your flakes in a way that uh, you can import different versions of JC. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it is possible to have a a flake that can be can, that, that can load like different versions and you can mm -hmm. like pass different arguments to it. This is an interesting topic by the way. It's building it's building Hadoop. Did you, did you a guy that had off? I don't know but... literally her I literally read Hadoop and I cringed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, at least it built guys. So let's see result dot bing dot spatula x Hadoop dash dash Ooh, dash dash silver. Dash dash? What? Dash, uh, no, not, not that. Dash dash is when you use stack. Dash F. Oh, just, okay. No, not dash F, dash R. Just, just dash R and enter. There it is. Type an expression. Let's see. Yeah. So, do, do like Lisp. 
No, no, no. You need to put like list, but instead of parentheses, you use brackets. Yes. Oh, really? It's squared yeah. brackets, yes. Square brackets. You can, also, you can also go to the beginning of that and do column T. Wait, what? You can do this, pick the same expression that you did before, and then in the, put in the beginning column T space. No, in the beginning, the beginning of that. A uh, column. No, 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 no. In the beginning of the whole thing, before the open brackets, column. Yeah. No, this no, is no, comma. That's but... comma. Yeah. This point. Yeah. No, that semicolon. Yes. T this. space. No, no, not, not uh, capital okay. T. Just lowercase t. Oh, okay, the typing. Oh, that's cool. Yes. We have the parser as well, so p, I think. Mhm. Mm you should do column p and the same expression. It will show you the est. Yeah, so the flake works. <laughs> that's that's yeah, the conclusion. Yeah. Now you can do the column K. Column Q, sorry. Q, not Q, not K. And enter. Yeah, to quit, right? Yeah, just, that's, that will quit. Okay, it works. Oh, man, there is a... Uh, now, that, now that I remember, like, I just don't know the, the expression, but for instance, people use this for some projects because just building the code doesn't mean it works. And there is an expression on Nix that I'm 100% sure it works on Flakes, but it's like you you can add an option. I remember some, for instance, some Python programmers have this, where okay, the code built, but I need to literally go to Python and then import. There is I, I forgot the expression by the way, but there is an, a, a little line that you put in your Flake, which is like okay, after the stuff built, go here. And for instance, try to run the repo, the repo. and if, if nothing crashes, you would consider this a build success. So you can add those extra steps on your build. Like, okay, I, I don't, I, I, I like I'm putting a high bar on what is supposed to be like works on my, on my software. I, yeah. don't, I don't want to just build stuff. I want to see if the repo actually works. So you can put this little, okay, I need, I need to find this option. Now it's an interesting option to put in this place, but uh, after you build, you can, is it post build steps? I think that's the name, our OS layer, but you can put those extra checks on your... Oh wait, so you can kind of like do testing, like runtime testing? Yeah, like... The, the yeah, I remember that, that in Geeks you have pre-build, right? Uh, configuration, yeah, yeah. and then install, yeah, yeah. and then when another you, step. You, yeah. That when would be use, cool. Yeah, but yeah, it already tests, use, right? It's just we need to remove the don't check in Haskell in specific case. Yeah, for instance. No, no, but no, but th those are like property testing and like quick check. What Benevich is talking about is to check the functionality. That's different. Oh, so, okay, so testing the yeah, okay, like setting an input, right? Yeah, exactly. We can like, for instance, we have multiple options. The dash r is just one example. We can test mm -hmm. each one of them. Okay, can, can you list the directory, Ben? What? To see if I can... Because we have an examples folder. So what Lemus is saying is that, okay, we could use that examples folder to load on the repo and see if it continues working. Yeah. What is your, is it L? Or yeah, no, it's dash, da, da, dash F, uh, examples slash, no, no, not, remove the first dot slash in the beginning. Is and that work? example will not work because that's ADTs and then we don't have the, uh, those yet. So put, I don't know, some dot SW, some is enough. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you can you can add this step on your because next you have different phases. Because it's it's hidden because it's a good abstraction. I don't have to think about it. Remember that slide when I said uh you, you extract your source code, you load your source code somewhere, you configure your source code, you build your source code, you install it and then you, you run post install operations, everything, like the, oh, there is a, there is, it's in the docs, but I don't have to think about it because it was abstracted. Like it, so this, yeah. this is the power of a good abstraction, by the way. Let's go here. Uh, here, like all those phases, they have a, a, a name on this. this. This part here is called, oh man, what is it? Now, now I forgot the name. But this a is, configuration. This, this is called the configuration phase. There is literally a a a function name on this that you put in your expression, which is called configuration name equals. 
if I want to make, if I want to customize my configuration phase, I would, I, would, I say like, how about we hold up here? How can I do? How well, Vinny, I just want to make sure that you're not deviating from the, your presentation. So sorry for yeah. that. That's that's fine. That was actually a good question. So yeah, like the the, the last of the the remainder of the presentation was just to talk about the Nix package. It's just a powerful abstraction over Bash. And you can just go to the Nix package repo, which is like a big repo full of Nix expressions, and it's full of like uh, interesting. I was just going to reiterate this, and of course, like one interesting thing about Elkos, which is the original creator of Nix, like he he published those ideas in 2003, and most of them now oh, are kind of popular in infrastructure, but they are not. The rent of the man. Right, <laughs> the right way. Like, um, for instance, everyone talks about sandboxing now when it was a feature of Nix from the beginning. You know, like it was like 10 years ahead of its time. But we still need to convince the whole DevOps world that reproducibility is a thing. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, okay, it's okay to have sandboxing, it's cool, but it, it better be reproducible. We better have some reproducibility because it's going to be next. It's going to make the experience even better. That means if I have something that runs on production, I can be 100% sure that is the same stuff that is running on my local machine because it's reproducible. The, the uh, license, I I never thought of it, and it's actually a really yeah. good feature if you think about every it because you, yeah. yeah, every time you write an expression on these packages, and if you go to the official repo, you're going to see that people put the licenses on the expression itself. So in theory, you if you don't want to build certain licenses, like I, I want to go full free software, you can do that just by analyzing the license meta package, the meta the, the, met, the metadata about the, the license. That's and so that, cool. Yeah, and because it, like if that. you're a company, right, you probably yeah. want to stay away from some licenses, right? No, imagine how how like you were you are getting around a, a potential gigantic hassle yeah. that oh later on the line a fundamental package was using a license that is asking uh, like it has some i don't know legal stuff involved and you don't have to you don't have to care about yeah, that you just i don't i don't want some unlibre license right something like this like I, i've worked on companies where people didn't care about licensing I can use the example, like I work on a company, I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to get sued, but uh, where people literally delivered a commercial project that later, not later, like some guys realized later that it was built upon a GNU library, a very like a famous GNU library, so dude, you could literally source, get sued. What? Yeah, closed source, right? Yeah, there was. It, it not only was it a closed source project, it was a commercial project that was being used. And I think oh. you, can tell, you just cannot uh, hide the code, right? You need to yeah, open you it. Hide the code. But here's the thing: the whole like it was an outsourcing company, so mm -hmm. the whole business is like, okay, we hide and maintain the code, and you guys like just use it. In yeah. theory, they could just if they ask it for a code, they could just deploy it in their own systems and then say fuck it. And you're like, the average developer doesn't care about, I, I, at least the developers, like most of the developer world, they just, they just don't look at licenses, they just use it. But man, license compliance is a real thing. And it, it, it can get you in trouble if you don't do the, the, if you really don't think about it. And of course, now people are talking about, for instance, offline, not offline, uh, remote developer environments, but they are literally carrying the same issues to the remote world. Like they are just making their environments cheaper. Like, oh no, I don't, ha I don't develop on my own machine. I just use some, I don't know, some company that sets up the remote environment for me, and I just use that. You are not solving, you are not tackling the real issue, which is your environment is not reproducible. You are just making it cheap in, like, I don't know, someone else's cloud. But you are going to have the same issues there if you mess up your environment. So it was actually it's worse, right? Because if you it's make the, the original image wrong, everybody has wrong image now. <laughs> like, uh, it, it, there are those ideas inside Nix that some of them prove, already proved to be ahead of their time. Like Nix was investing in infrastructure as code before it was a thing, like before it was a, 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 as, a, as much of a hype nowadays. Of course, it wasn't the best infrastructure as code tool, 
but it was built by a bunch of like a bunch of hobbyists at this point. But, uh, uh, and what what happened after all? Nowadays we have infrastructure as code, but everyone manages the most crazy complex infrastructures ever in YAML, which is the worst possible language to do things. And um, this is kind of like worst. a joke. Imagine the web in YAML. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, like we have these very complex systems, these very complex infrastructures that are managed by a programming. It's not even a programming language. That's managed by a markup language that sucks. And then people develop so work around solutions. Like everything that I see that tries to tackle the things that compile to YAML, right? Uh, most projects that I see to, that try to tackle the YAML issue. They are just templating solutions. Though they are not solving the actual issue. They are just templating YAML. So you are still writing YAML at the end of, at the, end of the day, but you are not seeing it. And the fact that it, it, templating is almost never a good way to solve an issue. It's always like putting the dirt uh, below the carpet. Like, and this is the Unix way of solving stuff. Like, this is why I say we need to escape this Unix, this Unix hole. And even if Nix doesn't become mainstream. It, at least it proved itself, it proved it was ahead of time two times, okay? Like, it ha there are lots of ideas here that are, they are pointing to the right direction to manage stuff. And it, it, it is a, nowadays it's, it's way easier to learn when I was, then when, it, when I was starting. People are evolving, the documentation is getting better, and as more people use it, they made like better uh, introductory tutorials, etc. Nowadays, their ergonomics is way, way better. Flakes proved to, to that. Like, uh, and nowadays, you can have your Nixos system. And it, 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 when I explain this to people, they get like, they get, they, they, their faces already get weird. Like, why, why, why do you have that? I have a log file that controls my entire system. My entire development environment has a log file. This is crazy. It's not just my project. No, my entire system has a log file that I update that I get new stuff, and if it breaks, I just roll back. This whole roll back, this whole, this whole roll back way of doing stuff and uh, locking your entire system, like uh, all the dependencies they have, they are locked. They, 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 they don't do crazy stuff. They don't do crazy state writing. Like, they, this, is, this, is, this is only proof to be a, a positive thing in my, in my, uh, in my workflow. Like, that, that's why like all my personal machines, they run Nixos. Yeah, I can. I, I think everybody that ran ran some sort of Arch-based operating system, everybody can relate to that. The mm. fact that you can like the fact that you can update and roll back, that's 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 not a given, right? That's that's something that <laughs> if you don't have that option, you you will suffer. Okay, I'll let yeah, the finish. Here, but I can I can drop it on chat later. But I think the talk is pretty much over. If you have any other questions, I'll just. I have questions, but Magetta will go first. It's just a comment. Like I was thinking about the about this. Like, like people trying to do like Docker today, and I always astonished. I'm always astonished to see that because we always come up with a bad abstraction to solve a problem and then there's something older that solved that thing and then we drop that on the past to go with something worse yeah. like, like worst uh, this is a curse on computing yeah like for example the <laughs> i'll bring a small talk again like oh, you don't have this concept of the of the compile compilation right on batch at least like you don't have this idea of like compilation you literally create an image so that is like attempting what to do what docker does so that's what I think is is a curse. So I'm I'm thinking of like pairing. Like think about this. Like if we yeah. had from the beginning paired reproducibility. But but that's the thing. I think mean. that's I'm not saying that in the beginning when the feature first launched, people w was people weren't able to say, oh, this is this is a good feature yeah, to have. Okay. But I think that the value of it increased when they saw yeah. that without it is just very yes. bad. It's all the problems that caused. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is a sort of situation. Well, it seems to be that the sort of situation that you need to jump into the hole to see mm -hmm. what is down there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a you gotta have your leg beaten, right? Yes. Yeah, but uh, I'd say, like, if you just go to the fundamentals, like, if you just analyze the fundamentals, you, you, you... Here's the thing, we have this very juvenile culture in computing, 
And juvenile bullshit is very common in Unix circles, by the way. With all the... Uh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Let's like rewrite this, man. We tend to go to certain directions that, for instance, older people or older ideas uh, already warns us, they already warned us about, and we just go there anyway, and then we, 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 we break everything. And, and it seems that we are solving, if we, like, uh, for instance, I'm lucky to work with functional programming languages today, and if I didn't, I'd be in a, in a, in a, good, I'd be in a, I'm mentally unstable at this point. Because I look at what happens in the front-end development or the back-end develop, no, uh, the mainstream back-end development world, and I see the same shit over and over again. I was like, dude, there's no way someone can keep themselves sane in an environment where people reinvent the wheel every single time. Like, it's, it's crazy. And, uh, it, it, yeah, I, I think I think Magetta and I we, we can relate to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> we can relate to that. My question is you said in the at the end that it is getting better to learn how to do nix stuff no, but no. my opinion it got better but it's still bad why uh it's the haskell curse what do you mean <laughs> for this dude i know you're a haskeller but okay. I, I think the haskell curse is, is the following like yeah, you, the, the community has very interesting ideas it just doesn't know how to sell them properly and when it manages to do something that ca catches everyone's attention, it has horrible documentation <laughs> So, I agree with you. Microsoft At did. some degree, I agree. But I think that something that I 100% see that Nix la lacks is like, oh, I want to know how to do this very, very surgery thing. Like, I don't want something general. I don't want something that is like describing the documentation. I want something very specific for my use case. Haskell doesn't have that problem. I can find posts of people oh, talking about these things, but in Nix, especially the error messages, I pick an error message, I copy paste that into Google, and I find nothing that nothing related oh. to what I'm having. You're still better than closures. <laughs> <laughs> That's there's the rent again. <laughs> Like you, you, you need to understand the following. You are still, and this is sometimes Hasklers, especially people. Like Haskell is already a niche. Nix is a niche inside the Haskell world. You know, like you are literally in the niche of a niche. Okay, that's fair. Like, for instance, yeah. you are someone who who likes programming language theory and proof languages, and then you like Nix. This is literally the niche of the niche of the niche. <laughs> You know, you find some people like that in the Nix community. I think the the whole Agda uh, packaging on Nix is one dude maintaining it for, <laughs> for like years, and because it's, it's, it's the person who matches the intersection of the three Venn diagrams. Like, oh, I like proof languages. I like reproducibility. I also like Haskell. And I'm like, oh, and there's like find one person who maintains most of it. Okay, that's fair. So, okay, okay, that's a fair answer, I would say. Any more questions or comments, Magetta? No, I don't think so. Okay, so thanks, Benevides. Uh, do you have anything um, else to say before I finish the recording? Yes, I say install NixOS. Uh, I'm going to say, as a person that did that, because this guy here said so, uh, <laughs> you, Wait, if you do that... Why are pointing to Bene to me? No, I'm pointing to Bagheta. Okay, I'm down, I'm down here. Yeah, no, the, the <laughs> anyway. distribution is different, but right I here. did what he said. And I, I'm using NixOS, and my experience so far has been that NVIDIA sucks, oh, and... Oh, that sucks <laughs> <laughs> the experience. NVIDIA sucks, Wayland I sucks. I have one comment to motivate. Wayland sucks. No, let me finish my experience. Okay. So, Wayland sucks, NVIDIA sucks. So, you're going to have to be patient. patient. You're going to have to buy a new GPU, probably. Okay, that's also a thing. Um, and be a, uh, have someone that knows what you don't know, because I have uh, like three dudes that know. So uh, if I have a problem, I know who to ask for. So that's my and advice. Do you have in, with is, is, did you put any debug configuration? No, 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 you don't understand. Any I had a problem with my NVIDIA graphics card that literally the error message that I and Magetta were debugging, the thing was being discussed on that day. Yeah, on the very day. <laughs> 
<laughs> like he wasn't unstable and then the thing broke the package broke on the day he was trying to rebuild his system like, was... <laughs> we found a post of a guy saying what i was saying in you know, like three hours ago <laughs> like <laughs> The advantage of using plates is that every time I get into these situations where like, just I mean, I, I'm really in a hurry and I, I updated my whole of my whole Nix package. The advantage of going with a flake environment is that if I don't have time to fix that stuff right now, I can just literally roll back the file. Like I do a git revert and I use the old version mm -hmm. on some commit of my file and that's it. I rebuild my system and I'm fine with that. Because I have a literal lock file for the entire system. Mm -hmm. And that diminished the number of uh, maintenance I had on my Nixo stuff. Tremendously, because look, I don't have the time to, to fiddle on Nixos anymore. I, unfortunately, I still have to use a Windows machine to work, which is like eternal suffering for me. So I don't <laughs> have time to grow Nixos 24 7 like I had on the, on, the, on the previous company that let me use that bullshit system, which is also nice. But. Uh, yeah, like, uh, if, if, when, when I have the whole lock file thing, my system just works. And if something breaks, like, okay, I don't have time, for instance, I don't have time to fix Emacs. Because some, because I, I, I was crazy enough to put my entire Emacs configuration on Nix. I was like, oh man, I don't have time to fix Emacs right now. <laughs> Go yeah. back to lock file, rebuild my system, and then I sleep happy. Okay, I'm going to use this Emacs in an old version for three days. Usually three days later someone fix it and I was like, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, but that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Because at some point, before buying the new GPU, I, uh, someone did fix it. And then when I rebuilt it, okay, it's fine. But then, I, but then like, it was the third time that I had a problem with an NVIDIA GPU since I installed NixOS. So I decided, okay, f screw it. I'm going to spend the money. <laughs> I, I bought the Radeon and I sleep like this, like sunny. <laughs> My old laptop, I literally bought it. I, I, there was a cheaper version of NVIDIA and Radeon. I literally bought the, the, the more expensive Radeon. Yes. Just because I would sleep better for Linux in general. And not have, if you understand the whole history, just, well, you can read about it. It's Drew DeVolt's blog on, about NVIDIA. And it was like, it's literally fuck NVIDIA every time. NVIDIA is just the worst company to be on Linux. Yeah, NVIDIA okay. And, 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 and people, there's a reason Torvald says that, that yeah. there's a reason he chose an, an, an Radeon X580. It is because of this. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, go Mageta uh, to I finish. Have seen just the motivation for like whoever wants to begin using a tool like this. Not only Nix, I guess, but like Emacs, Vim, I, I think all of those fit on the same. Which is the long-term investment you gain with it, right? So once you've, you're gonna spend a lot of time automating your system. That's for sure. You're gonna suffer a lot, but eventually that will pay off. Like I, I don't. For example, I installed on my computer here. Um, I think I took less than five minutes to just, just like install everything, and I was up and running with my configurations, my Emacs, my configurations uh, for. Editing, oh, like yeah. my compilers, everything was there. So I think I this on long it. term is yeah. the Emacs effect, right? The more you use it, the better you get at it, and the less things you need to do to make it work the way you want it to. And you, you be you as long as you use it, more locked in you're gonna be. So be aware of that as well. At some point, you're yeah, not gonna be able good. to live without that. Yeah. yeah you're <laughs> you're gonna get spoiled, so There's that. Like, I have an example as well. There was a time when my one of my computers, one of my work computers, were stolen, and I was like, "Oh man, I literally need to get my old environment back, like my old setup." And then I, I picked a old computer I had, downloaded my Nixus configuration, which is all on GitHub, and that's the best thing about going declarative. You can have your entire infrastructure on GitHub. I just pick it, the, the the configuration I had that. I rebuilt my system using that configuration and then literally half an hour later, like after installing Nix, which is already like a, I don't know, it takes 15 minutes for really no... Yeah, if you have a script, it live in lines, man. Yeah, it's even nice, but I didn't have the script to install it. But dude, from installing everything to having my entire environment working the same way as I had before, it was like half an hour. And I had the same key bindings, the same everything. It was all just there. Why? Because I, I did have the suffering in the beginning to learn and to try to automate stuff. 
But then it's, it's, it's a piece of, piece of cake right now. I can just rebuild my system whenever I want and wherever I want. Yeah. So I guess we're done. So, bye. Thanks, folks.